Hi, I'm Seben Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Deciphering Multi-Phase Interleaved PWM Converters with Coupled Inductors. There is a relevant video to this presentation. Here is the link. I'm also going to print the link at the description section of the YouTube video that you are now watching. I'm showing here a multi-phase interleaved buck. There are a number of switchers here. It's a synchronous configuration. Each one is like a buck, but they are all connected together and feeding the output. Here's the filter and the load. Now the pulses coming to the gates are interleaved. They are spread over the period. I'm showing here two sections here and so we have them in 180 degrees. Each one is invoking a current rise at the corresponding inductor. And since they are spread, and in this particular case in 180 degrees, there is a partial cancellation of the ripple as it comes out at the sum of these two. And consequently, the ripple current of the capacitor will be much smaller depending on the duty cycle. This is shown here for different duty cycles and number of sections. If it is only one unit, like one buck, we have a maximum of ripple at 0.5 duty cycle. If we have two sections, in fact, we have a perfect cancellation at 0.5 duty cycle. And then if we have three section or four section, we have reduction of ripple and there are some spots of cancellation. So this is very well known and in fact it's being used quite widely. There is another way to go around and that is to use coupled inductors for two sections. So we have here one magnetic body with two windings which are coupled and they are then feeding the output. In this case, there are two possibilities. One is that we'll have the polarity the same for the two windings, like here the dots are here and here. And there's another way in which the polarity is reversed. And we are going to discuss the difference between uh, these cases. The idea of a interleaved coupled inductor buck converter was the first, I believe, proposed by Professor Fred Lee and his co-workers in this paper from 2001. And here we see the coupled inductors. We see possible configuration in so-called integrated magnetics, and I'm going to talk about it later on. And here are models of the two cases. This is the case in which the polarity is the same. And this is a model, an equivalent circuit for this case. And here is the case in which the polarities are reversed. And this is the model. I'm going to use a different model in this uh, presentation. So what are the issues here that we have to worry about? First of all, the question is copper losses, which is of course associated with the winding current. Is it good? Is it better than the separated uh, inductors? We have the question of what is the total capacitor current, ripple current. And then there is a question whether we are gaining anything in the core size and losses. And finally, there is the issue of dynamics, which I'm not going to discuss. And that is how is this uh, coupled inductor affecting the dynamics of the system. And again, this is something which I'm not going to discuss in this presentation. Now, what I'm going to show is the uh, explanations which are based on simulation using LT spice, which I think are better showing all the effects of this approach. The first question is, how do we model a coupled inductor interleaved PWM buck converter? And of course, the, and of course the generic way to do that would be just to use coupled inductors. Say in LT spice, you can have two inductors which are coupled here is between L1 and L2, and there is a coupling coefficient. And obviously you can run this system with this coupling between them. The downside here is that we really don't see the inner workings of what is really happening. So there is another model that we can use in which we are using an ideal transformer, and then we have the magnetization inductance 
and the leakage inductances on both sides. Here it is. This is an ideal transformer. This is the magnetization inductance, and these are the leakage inductances on both sides. Again, this is a very nice model, but it's not very convenient for the purpose that we need it here. So I'm going to use another model, and that is this one, in which I'm using an ideal transformer. I'm putting the magnetization inductance on one side and the leakage inductance on the other side. And of course, uh, you have to scale it. And in the video that I have referenced, there is discussion of this model. So if I turn it around, here is what I see, which is exactly here. We have an ideal transformer. We have the magnetization inductance here, and we have the leakage inductance reflected to the other side. The advantage of this uh, model is that here we have just the winding of a ideal transformer, so we can find out, and therefore it's easy to actually analyze the circuit. Now the first question is, how good are these models? And what I'm showing here is the duty cycle, which is smaller than 0.5. We have two phases, of course, and here is the current of a winding, in the three models that I've shown. And as you can see, they are smack one on top of the other. So these models are exactly equivalent to one to the other. We can use any one of these. And as I've said, I'm going to use this one, which is convenient for the understanding of what is really happening here. So let's consider the case in which we have a pulse going into V1. This is one of the windings. The other one at that time is zero, so here is zero, here is V in. Now, as I have said, the nice thing about this model is that here, this winding is connected now between zero and V out, and therefore, we have a reflection of the voltage here to the secondary by the coefficient that has to be used in this for this particular model. So we have a case in which we have V in, we have the leakage inductance, and then we have the reflected voltage, and then we have V out. On the other hand, if the polarity is re reversed, again, we have a reflection, but the voltage is in the opposite direction. So this is the basic difference between these two. So now, if I look at the slope of the current while V in is on, and the peak current that I'll reach, delta I, I see that I have the total voltages here is V1 plus V out K square minus V out. This is for this case in which the polarity is the same, while here, due to the fact that the polarities are reversed, I have a minus sign here. So it is clear that in this particular case, we're going to have a higher ripple because the total voltage here is much higher. The leakage inductance here is the same for the two cases. So since this voltage is much higher, then obviously delta I in this case is going to be higher. So this is one of the differences between the two configurations. So here I'm showing the two cases. These are outputs of a lt spice simulation. I'm sweeping K between 0.2 to 0.8, three points. This is this duty cycle of 0.2. Here is when the windings are reversed. Here is when we, the polarity is the same. And as you can see, the ripple here is much, much larger. These are two windings and the two windings of the coupled inductor. Here we go up to 5.4 and here we go to 7.2. So we do have here a much higher ripple than we have in the case of the reverse polarity. But hold on, there is another important difference between these two. And here it is. If I look at the ripple of the two windings, I see that the polarity of the ripple is the same in this case. So therefore, the current that will be coming out will be an added current. On the other hand, here, the magnitude of the ripple is higher, 
But the polarity is reversed because of the dots, which are here the same correction. So when the current is going into one winding into the dot, it's coming out of the dot in the other winding. So we have two polarities here, which are partially canceling each other when added up at the capacitor. I'm showing here the case of a duty cycle of point A. Point A and point two are about the same because it's just a sort of a polarity or voltage reversal. So we have about the same situation. Here I see a higher ripple here, 12.5. And here again, it is 14. So again, we see this effect of a higher ripple here. Now, when it comes to the capacitor current, which is sort of adding up the two currents, there is a very big difference. You see that in the case of the same polarity, since the ripple of the windings is in 180 degree, there is a fairly nice cancellation. We have only 800 milliamp. While here, since these uh, ripples are being added, we have a much higher ripple. So now there is, of course, the question, how does the coupled inductor compare to the uncoupled case? And I'm showing here the input current, that is the current of one of the windings. Here we see the ripple of the winding for the coupled inductor with the reverse polarity, which is the best of the two, which is the, the lowest ripple, compared to the case of the uncoupled inductors, and we can see that the, in fact, the ripple of each one of the windings is somewhat higher than the ripple of the uncoupled inductor. So in this case, we are really not gaining much, although the frequency is sort of higher. But then when I compare the capacitor current in the two cases, this will be for the coupled inductor, see it's a 5 amp, and this will be for the uncoupled inductor. So in fact, the capacitor current of the coupled inductor is higher than the current of the uncoupled case. So there's no really gain in here. So to summarize, the advantage of the coupled inductors in terms of the ripple does not seem to be very good. Now, of course, this behavior is a function of the coupling coefficient as well as the duty cycle. So you can see that for a given coupling coefficient, the ripple is lower. That is when the coupling coefficient is small. So it, it's almost like two uncoupled inductor. It's approaching this, but the gain is not obvious here. We don't see any significant difference. In fact, all what we see is a higher ripple. If I go back to the input current, that is the winding current, then for low K, I see that indeed the ripple is smaller, but then it is approaching the uncoupled inductor. So we can summarize that in terms of ripple, it doesn't seem as if the coupled inductor is really adding much. In fact, in some region of operation, it is much worse. Now, what about the magnetics? Well, here, obviously, if I have two inductors, each one is on its own core, the volume here, the size here, will be larger than this integrated magnetics in which we are kind of saving this section here. When you combine these two, you sort of eliminate one of this section, so therefore the total volume is going to be smaller. But then, if we look now at the fluxes, we see the following. If we are talking about DC, then if the polarity is the same, then we have a problem in that the two fluxes of the two sections are actually being added up at the middle. So in fact, it's pushing the pH curve higher and therefore the losses for the AC will be higher because as you have a DC bias, current DC in the core, for an AC, the losses will be higher. 
On the other hand, if the direction is reversed, we see that there is a cancellation of the flux. The D I'm talking about the DC flux. There is a cancellation here. So at least this section has a lower flux density and these sections have the same flux density as you would have with the regular uncoupled inductor. Now what about the case of a multi-phase in which we have more than two? Well, there are two ways to go. You can either combine pairs of two with one coupled inductor for each one, and this will of course cut the number of uh, magnetic element into half, or you can combine all of these on one core, but then you have to watch the direction, so you'll have cancellation, because we would like to work in the reverse direction, so each pair will be sort of reversed, and then you have one body with all these windings. Now in this case you may require current sharing control to make sure that the current is indeed is the same in all these inductors. This is no different from an uncoupled multi-phase uh, interleaved buck converter. Also you do need a current sharing control. So what are the conclusion of this uh, examination that I'm presenting here? Well there is certainly more to interleave the buck with coupled inductor than meets the eye. It's not simple. I have not covered all the options, all the possibilities, all the coupling coefficient values, different duty cycle. These have to be considered very carefully to see that indeed at the operating point expected, indeed there is a any advantage to the coupled in inductor. It seems also the opposite polarities of the coupled inductor seems to be the best but at the penalty of higher capacitor current because there is no cancellation of the ripple in the two windings. In fact they are being added. It also looks that some magnetic saving seems possible but obviously designing an integrated magnetics is not obvious and it's not trivial. And finally we can see that simulation can be very helpful in the design of such systems and as I've shown there is one particular model that is really very handy in understanding what is really going on and getting expressions for the peak current. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you will find it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.